Uh, I'll just tell you a little bit about myself. I was uh, injured in 1981 in an ocean diving accident in Newport Beach, which is about a 15-minute drive from here, and that's where I currently live. Um, Donna Sullivan had asked me to answer or address a, several areas or questions, and the first one she uh, asked me is, why, why did I start? Well, uh, even before my injury, I had always been interested in science. And I thought from the moment that I got interested that science was really going to be the only way out of my wheelchair. And she asked, uh, asked me, well, how did I get started? Well, um, I thought at first if I could just raise $25,000, I thought that would just be great, you know, and that, that would might be, make a big difference, you know. But here I am 31 years later and $10 million raised. So um, it was... Uh, I got donations from family and friends, and uh, we, we would act, we'd have jogathons, you know, where uh, we'd, you know, we'd get people be sponsored and run around the track and all that. Um, but not long after I got injured, I got a call from um, a woman named Michelle Alioto. Some of you might know her. She, her family's famous in San Francisco because um, uh, her father was the mayor there. Uh, her daughter had been injured in a skiing accident, and she asked me to join the National Board of Directors of this group that was, was forming at the time, it was called the American Paralysis Association. So when I got injured, there was no national group at all that did any funding or any organizing on behalf of spinal cord injury research. That shows you how old I am. Um, so that organization uh, evolved into the Christ, what is now the Christopher and Dana Reeve Foundation, and I served for uh, 29 years on that board of directors, that national board of directors. In 1987, I tried uh, to get funding from the state of California. Um, so I, but I, the best I could do was to get a task force. Uh, but I tried when um, Governor George Duke Majin was the governor and the legislature was controlled by Republicans. Now Don and Roman Reed came along uh, several years afterwards and they were smarter than I am because they tried it with a Democratic governor and a Democratic legislature and managed to get the Roman Reed law passed, which uh, ended up uh, uh, providing about $11 million over a number of years for research in California. And that, that $11 million was actually leveraged into about $87 million. So that was a very uh, excellent uh, advocacy. And we worked, uh, all of us in California, hard to get that passed. And we just about got it done again here now because it got discontinued during the financial crisis. Uh, Donna asked me to talk about the changes that have happened in the field. And I have to say that, uh, the one thing that hasn't changed, the most important thing about spinal cord injury research that hasn't changed in 31 years, and that is that we still don't have a cure. Uh, we could be like 99% of the way toward a cure, and none of us are going to be satisfied until we finally have a bona fide treatment that restores function to human beings. Now, what, there have been tremendous changes otherwise in the, uh, in the, in the field. Um, I, I mentioned the start of the American Paralysis Association. Uh, of course, the Miami Project has formed, and they've, uh, they've got a, over 100 researchers down there doing excellent research. Um, the Craig H. Nielsen Foundation has been formed. Uh, Unite to Fight Paralysis has been formed. A number of other organizations. So on the funding side and the advocacy side, I've seen tremendous changes over the years, all very positive. Well, the science changes have even been more dramatic, perhaps. Um, I went to one of the early uh, Society for Neuroscience meetings. This could have been in about 1982 when it was really sort of forming. And they, um, at one point in the meeting, they said, um, anybody that wants to talk about spinal cord injury research, you can just go over in the corner over there. And this is really true. There was about 15 people that went. And that was it at the time. And as you know now, we have hundreds of, and maybe thousands of people worldwide that are doing research on spinal cord injury. And what we saw this morning was just truly remarkable, truly remarkable. You know, some of the biggest advances in spinal cord injury research are actually based on discoveries in other fields. So the, the rise of molecular biology, 
and high content screening that uh, Murray talked about this morning, gene therapy, um, P10, which uh, came actually from the cancer field. So um, we're really been, we're lucky that that happened. Okay, Donna wanted me to mention our company. We have a company that's, uh, its name is Cure Medical. And um, I'm just gonna give you about 10 seconds of this. Uh, this is a, a company that manufactures um, urinary catheters uh, um, sold in the United States. We're, um, we're, it's kind of like David versus Goliath. We're like the David. Um, but we, um, we think we have the best product for the best price on the market. But what I'm most proud of is that uh, the company has um, uh, pledged to give 10% of all of its uh, net profits to uh, spinal cord injury research. And I can tell you that uh, in just four years now that we're, do we're donating substantial amounts of money to, to SCI research. And I'm, that's the part of the company that I'm really the most proud of. Now, I want to talk about something we saw this morning because uh, it went by really quickly, I know. And um, we, scientists are talking in terms that uh, aren't maybe familiar to the people in the room who um, uh, don't read science or talk about science all the time. Yay, here comes Roman. <laughs> uh oh, now I have to cut my talk short now that Roman's here. Done. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'm only about halfway done in there. And then, uh, are you all mic'd up? Okay, good. Um, okay, so, you know, about nine years ago, um, I, I, th I started, I mean, I'd been raising money steadily throughout all my years of spinal cord injury research. But nine years ago, I would say I was maybe a little frustrated or just maybe I thought that the research wasn't um, progressing at the speed that I thought it was. So I've sort of stepped back and like, you know, um, you take a piece of paper and you draw a line down the middle, like what are the pros and the cons? In my case, it was like, uh, you know, what have we accomplished and where do we need to go? Uh, but I thought I would go a step further than that and ask scientists what we really needed. So I polled 12 of the top scientists that I could find, and I know Oz was one of them. I'm not sure Jerry might have been one, but some I was had, with the benefit of being on the board of the APA and the Christopher Dana Reed Foundation and the fact that I administered this award called the Ameritech Prize, which Jerry Silver won one year, um, I really got to meet the very, very top people in the field of spinal cord injury research and related areas. So I asked them, I just said, what, you know, the, the question was, what, we're paralyzed, you know, what, what do we need to get out of our wheelchairs? What, what is it that we could, what's, what, is, what do we need to accomplish to do this? And I got a unanimous answer that came back to me. And the answer was, you need to regenerate this tract of nerves called the cortical spinal tract. So just to give you a, a brief, a really brief anatomy, five minutes, okay, I can, I can do it. Um, a brief anatomy lesson that um, we got um, all these different tracts of nerves in the spinal cord that control different things. There's the vestibular, vestibular, vestibular liquor excuse me, tract that, uh, restores uh, move, uh, balance. The reticulospinal tract restores the fact, the ability to think about walking. But this cortical spinal tract, that's the one that controls voluntary movement. So if I wanted to reach out and grab that glass, which I can't, the, it's because my cortical spinal tract is interrupted. Now it also controls breathing. It also controls uh, bladder and bowel. It obviously controls movement, hand function. So this is a really important thing to regenerate this cortical spinal tract. So, and now I'm gonna roll Donna and uh, Marilyn's eyes in the back of their head because I'm gonna tell you about what an analogy I have called the tennis balls and the string. <laughs> all right, so most of the nerves, uh, most of the cells in our body are circular, all right? The nerve cells are circular, but they have this long extension that comes off of them called an axon, all right? And so let's imagine that the nerve cell itself, let's call it a tennis ball, and they'll call the extension the string, okay? Now, all of the tennis balls are up in your brain. And after a spinal cord injury, they all survive. Now, they, the, the strings, what they do is 
they bundle together in the brain and they come down in the spinal cord. So when we have a spinal cord injury, what happens is we're busting the axons. We're, we're breaking the strings. But all the, ner all the tennis balls, all the nerve cells, the bodies up there, they all survive. They're totally alive. So what we really need to do is to get those strings, those axons growing again. And if you, now, you know, so far, it hasn't been shown that you can put stem cells into the injury site and make those things grow. But what we saw this morning was, and I, I told you it was surreal for me, I really, I almost felt like it was an out-of-body experience to see this morning, to see Dr. Stewart and Dr. Murray Black, uh, Blackmore showing, they actually showed us that they are regenerating those things for the first time. This is huge. So the, 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 the part of the spinal cord that we need to regenerate for movement, these guys are regenerating in animals. And Oz was showing you there, like, this is what we need to translate it into human beings. So we've really, really, really come a long ways. So I ask you, if you're, if you, if you want, if you want, if you're interested in movement, if you're interested in getting movement, uh, if that's your thing, if you want to end this kind of paralysis, you can't use your hands or bowel or bladder or something. Look at this. Look at research that's promoting this, the cortical spinal tract regeneration, and that's really important. Okay, um, the last thing, how many minutes do I have? Two? Oh, wow. Um, all right, so now I'm going to get into the mud for one minute with uh, Jerry Silver. Get down in the, and get into this acute versus uh, chronic argument. Um, for me, that argument kind of misses the point. I think the real question is, can you regenerate the nerves? You know, if you can regenerate the nerves, then fine, let's, you know, the process is, after that is, try it in acute, because you can get an answer so much more quickly. If you, if you say, well, let's, you know, just try something in chronic right away, well, you're, you're actually wasting your time. Or you're going to lose a lot of time, because if it doesn't work in chronic injury, these experiments take so much longer. They can take somewhere between six to, to, uh, six to, t to 10 months, to 12, 12 months. You can do an acute injury experiment in a couple months' time and get some of those results. So, you know, I know it sounds counterintuitive, and listen, I mean, to hear, if I could hear myself saying this 10 years ago, I w I'd cut my head off because I was all for chronic research. I'm still for chronic research. I think absolutely chronic research is where we got to go. But there are certain steps to make it faster to get where we ultimately want to go, and that is, you know, first of all, are you regenerating the nerves or the axons? And if you are, then try it out in, in acute injury and you can get an answer in a couple months and find out whether it's working in animal or not. If it's working in an acute injury like that, then we can go ahead and try the, uh, the chronic injury. All right, so the last question, uh, and I, I'm, I got it almost done. The last uh, area that uh, Donna asked me to address was the promise. And I think the promise is tremendous. I think what we saw with Dr. Blackmore this morning uh, is kind of the future of where spinal cord injury research is going. And that is, as we dig into the, uh, the unknowns of human biology, spinal cord injury research is definitely going to benefit enormously. That's why I asked him about this ENCODE project, for example. Uh, Jeffrey Macklis at uh, Harvard University has identified the genes for the cortical spinal tract over eight years ago. But he can't get them growing. He can't turn them on. Can't, make the, can't, can't flip a switch to make those CST axons grow. But maybe with this ENCODE project, product, project and the, there might be some answers there that we can do that. So those kind of things are definitely in our future. And the other last thing is that uh, there's all sorts of new techniques that were accelerate the research and provide the remaining answers. And I think some of the, uh, the equipment and the machinery that Dr. Blackmore showed this morning is an example of that, how those things are just extremely advancing science and getting us answers for, um, you know, able to get through thousands of genes uh, in a much more quicker time. Okay, thank you.